today I'm just out in my chair hide to do a little bit more testing with the Canon 90D. And uh, I've just come out into a little bit of woodland here and there are some small birds flying around so hopefully I'll get something landing um, on some of the branches that are in front of me. There's been a lot of uh, discussion about the 90D not exactly working the way people want it to and not really getting sharp shots or photos being blurred out at higher shutter speeds. The thing is a lot of us have been using something like the Canon 7D Mark II or something else and those are lower megapixel sensors so with that, you're able to shoot at slower shutter speeds and get sharp results. But the more megapixels your sensor has, the faster you're gonna have to put up that shutter speed. And I think that's some of the problems that people have been having. Even I've noticed that myself, but I mean, even around one two thousandth of a second sometimes just isn't enough. And the problem with that is that you're having to put up your ISO really high and that is not always the best thing. I thought I'd just come out and do a little bit more testing uh, with some small birds that fly around and see if I can keep up with them. But so far I've been having some really mixed results with this camera that I just don't like. And I think I'll actually be sending it back. Um, what's worked best is having a focus grouping of nine. That seems to work really well, especially with birds in flight. But when it comes to small birds, you kind of need that single focus point and it doesn't always work the way you want it to. And the tracking is exactly up to par with uh, the 7D Mark II. I mean, don't get me wrong, the camera is good you get some really good results. But the focusing really needs some tweaking and the lenses need to be adjusted to the camera as well. Um, my 500 that I have on now, I've had to adjust it to minus 14 just to be able to get close enough to sharp results. Um, I'm not gonna get anything better that I have been trying a lot. Otherwise, shooting in live view will give you the best results, but you don't really wanna sit there shooting in live view. It doesn't exactly work for when you're tracking birds. Um, unless you had a mirrorless camera like the Canon EOS R where you could then look through the viewfinder and see exactly what's happening but in live view on a camera like this that's just not gonna work. So there's a, a wren that keeps flying around here. Absolutely hard bird to focus on, really hard to get the shot. The only way I can freeze it is shooting at one two thousand five hundredth of a second but even that is giving me a couple of mixed results. Some of it is a little bit blurry or out of focus. Um, I am shooting wide open at f4, and even my ISO is at 2500. So it's looking a little bit washed out. Um, so it's a little bit hard, but yeah. And I'm also having a little bit of focusing problem, but that's because I am shooting towards a lot of these branches and trees, so there is a lot of distracting elements. So that it's making it very hard for the camera to keep up. So that's completely understandable. Um, but even when it gets the focus of the bird, it still seems to hunt quite a bit, which is really annoying instead of just staying on it. But I'm guessing that's because of the settings I put it on. So I might have to put it back onto the setting where it locks on to the subject. And I think that should help. So I'm gonna test that again without changing the other settings. Um, as long as the rang comes back again. Tiny little bird, so that's what makes it very hard to uh, get a shot of it as well, because it's tiny and it's very fast. up not having that many birds to photograph in the end so I left it a couple of days and ended up being able to photograph some deer but I didn't get to vlog in that situation but I just made the most of what I could get and uh, I got some really great results the camera did really well it was just a few little hiccups though um, 
with the last shot you just saw, I can show you here. I actually took a total of seven shots of the same image and one thing you can really see clearly here is that the first image started off slightly almost um, inaccurate focus and then the next one went slightly out of focus, more out of focus and then again more out of focus and then the last one got the shot and it was in focus and it came out really nicely but this seems to happen quite a lot with the camera I don't really know why even though the deer was pretty much stationary it wasn't moving and neither was I there's still for some reason the camera managed to get the shot and it just slightly kept them moving the focus and going in and out of focus even though it was right there um, and the problem with this is I've ended up with so many photos and maybe maybe one of those images being in focus and when you get the shot the image is really nice it's really clear it's really good the detail is really good um, but there is this problem of it not working the way it really should and it's quite frustrating but still the camera it is really good you get some really good images out of it and you can't really go wrong with this camera it will do the job but for me, it's just not working the way I really want it to and I will be sending it back. But that's not to say that the camera is bad, it's just that it has a lot of things that you need to tweak. There's a lot, of, a lot of adjustments that just need to be changed. The lenses need to be adjusted to the camera, like my 500mm being minus 14. And you're pretty much going to have to do that with a lot of other lenses as well. Um, so it just seems like right out of the box you're not just gonna get the results that you really want to. At least when it comes to wildlife and fast action, you really need to pump up that shutter speed really high just to make sure you get the shot. These were shot at 1 640th of a second, which at that point was good enough because of the distance and the animal wasn't moving, so that really helps. And I was able to shoot a little bit slower, but when it comes to birds in flight, you really need to have something at least around one 2,500th of a second, if not more. The camera will give you good results when you get that shot, and I'm sure this will work out really good for portraits and landscape as well, but right now I'm mainly using this for wildlife, and that's probably what you're watching this for as well. I did one more test where I put it up against the Canon EOS R just to see the quality. I have the 90D on the left here and the EOS R on the right. And you can see they're both really sharp images. There's a lot of contrast in the 90D that's coming forward and the EOS R is allowing you to have a little bit more detail in those shadows and you're able to bring back a little bit more from those shadows. Whereas the 90D, it's kind of eliminating those shadows a lot. So it means you need to put up or lower your exposure in some ways, lower your aperture or lower your shutter speed to be able to bring back some of that detail in shadow areas, which is a little bit annoying, but I think most of the time it's going to work out really well and you're not going to have to worry about that too much. But uh, yeah, there's a little bit of a difference there. I just thought I would compare it quickly, but otherwise, the camera does work, it's really nice, it gets the job done and it does what it needs to do. So I mean if you're upgrading from something lower, you will be pretty happy with this camera but it just needs a little extra tweaking and that's just something you're gonna need to bear in mind. So I'm not trying to make this camera look bad at all, I just want people to know that there is a little bit of fixing up in the camera to be able to sometimes get the exact results that you want. I mean, every camera has problems where focusing can come in and out a bit, but um, I haven't had the problems like I've had on the 90D before, at least not that much. And yeah, it's just had a little trouble, so it's been taking a little extra work to get the images that I really want. And also one more thing, I'm an affiliate with Topaz Labs and I have been using their Denoise AI software to get rid of some of the noise in my images and it just works out really well. It has this really nice finish to the images and it's definitely a lot better than what I've been getting compared to using the noise reduction in my editing software. So I highly recommend them. If you want to, you can uh, download the trial period just so you can test it out for yourself and see if you like it. But I have a link below and it's an affiliate link. I don't really like to sell, but a little extra does help and it really means a lot for you guys to watch my videos and for me to get a little extra in the end as well. Otherwise, I hope you've enjoyed this and you've gotten a little bit of something out of it. 
like I said, the camera is good. You get some really good results. It will do the job. But I just wanted to let you know that there is a little bit of extra work that goes into it. But otherwise, I highly recommend the camera. Even though I'm sending it back, it's just because for my workflow, it's not working the way I want it to. But that's not to say that it won't work for you. So if you're new to the channel, please subscribe. Give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed this. If you didn't really like the information, give me a thumbs down, that's fine. But otherwise, I'll see you all next time.